Hello and welcome to Modded Kerbal Space Program. We have quite a few mods on here. We'll talk about them as we get to them. The biggest one, the one that's going to have the most game effect, is Kerbalism. And I'm using the default, uh, default normal difficulty settings for everything with two exceptions. I have Solar Storms turned off in Kerbalism because uh, that's just kind of an annoying mechanic to me. Um, and the other thing I've changed is the part failure rates. I have cut down to about half of their default value. And uh, I like the idea of part failures, but just the rates by default seemed a little bit aggressive to me. So I brought them down by about half. Other than that, we're sitting at all of the, uh, the default settings you get when you choose normal difficulty. We're in career mode, so we do have to earn money. And we just started, so we have done nothing yet. It's time for us to see what our first contracts are. So what's available? Do some science. Uh, launch a vessel into the air and recover or transmit any science. Can do that. Mm -hmm. Orbit Kerbin. Um, probably can't do that at the moment because I haven't unlocked any parts yet. Suborbital trajectory Kerbin. Uh... That's easier than orbit, but still probably can't do it quite right yet. Leave the launch pad. Well, if we're going to fly to do science, we're certainly going to leave the launch pad in that process. So those two contracts synergize with each other. We'll take them both, which is the max. We can only take two right now until we upgrade the command center. Mission control. So this probe core, this is the only thing, the only command part we have right now. Uh, you may notice there's no manned command pods here. One of the mods I have installed changes up the tech tree, so you have to start with unmanned missions and work your way towards manned missions. What else do we have? No fuel tanks. One one little booster rocket. Clearly we're going to be using that because otherwise we don't have anything else that will get us off the launch pad. Biplane wire. I don't actually know what that's for. I think it's just an aesthetic part from one of the mods. we got fins. Might as well throw some fins on. Uh, is this a stupid idea? Kind of looks like a dunce cap. No electrical, so we only have the electric charge built into the probe core. That's 10 EC. Comms, we will need an antenna because we obviously want to transmit this data. We've got the thermometer here only takes two minutes to run, and it's only 450 kilobytes of data. Whereas this one, the telemetry report built into the probe core, it only takes 30 seconds to run, but it's more data, 750. That's relevant because with Kerbalism, we don't transmit data instantly. I guess you don't stop either, but with Kerbalism, it comes from the speed of your antenna, so we can only transmit 2.2 kilobytes per second. That means it's going to take me uh, 750 roughly times 2, 1500 seconds plus a point two, like 1650 seconds to transmit the telemetry report. Whereas the temperature scan is only going to take 990 seconds. So I can transmit this faster. Both of those will take longer then it takes the experiment to run. So the relevant thing here is how fast I can transmit the data. That means temperature report is going to be my experiment, and we'll just take the experiment out of here because it does save 100, 100 uh, Kerbal dollars, whatever you call those credits with a K because it's Kerbal. I heard somebody call them Spacos once, and I really like that. So let's call them Spacos. I will pull some fuel out of it. We'll like half fuel it. Bring up our Kerbalism control panel, start the temperature scan, and launch. So we would like to see this apoapsis run up to like 17 kilometers and stop.
Hey, we just touched over 18, but that's fine, because the drag pulled us back down. So now we want temperature scan to finish before we hit the ground. That would be the best case scenario. Do we have enough electric charge? Maybe? And we're not collecting data, right? Yes. So see this 100% is staying at 100%. It's not decreasing. So we're not filling up our hard drive. We are transmitting data as fast as we're collecting it. That's good. That means our only bottleneck is how long it takes to run this experiment. We would like to finish this experiment before we impact, but if we don't, then we can just launch a second craft to finish the experiment. Might as well time warp a little. I'm not in control of anything. We're just falling. I uh, hope I don't bomb one of my buildings. Ah, we're gonna be like 10 seconds short. Let's, uh, oh, a bit of it survived. Let's go to the Space Center and launch that same craft again. We did complete one of the contracts for leave the launch pad. So we'll go ahead and pull that. We got a lot of world's first milestones. Speed and distance records. Any good contracts open up as a result of that upper atmosphere. So I can do that by just putting the fuel in the booster. I don't like these haul and test contracts because uh, they're really annoying, actually. Because mm -hmm. they have these requirements for you have to be in a specific altitude range and a specific speeds range. I just, I just don't do these. <laughs> the only ones that I will ever do are the ones that are test at the launch pad. I don't see any of those right now. Um, I don't even really like doing those. So let's do this, reach the upper atmosphere. And then we'll launch that same thing again. Let's recover the last one. Let's go into the vehicle assembly building and... Da -doop. Here we are again. Temp scan on. As soon as that finishes, I'm going to trigger TM report. See, now our data available is going down. I want to stop that just long enough for that to transmit. Because now we're collecting data faster than we're transmitting it. Contract complete for transmitting that experiment. TM report will be done. See, now, you see it was like five seconds away from done, now it's 50 seconds away, because now it's throttled by the data. Um, when we pass 18 kilometers, I'm going to pause TM report so the temp scan can run. Another contract complete, reach the upper atmosphere. Looks like we're going to top out at 66. That's not that far away from just going into space, actually. Why don't you, for the moment, work on transmitting this? And we can time warp. Uh, 70 kilometers is would be the cutoff for space. Uh, similar to how I didn't want to go into upper atmosphere on the first launch, I'm glad we didn't go into space on this launch, because I want to take a contract for it. You can see up here, this is a part of the Kerbal Engineer uh, mod. I just created a panel that tells me what biome I'm in and where the cutoffs are for uh, uh, flying low is below 18, flying high is below 70, space low is below 250, and space high is above that. Oh, we just ran out of flipping electric charge. Well, isn't that something? Okay, that means we have data on board that is just going to be destroyed. We're never going to transmit it before we impact. Coming down fast. Coming down fast. To the Space Center.
more world's first milestones broken. We're up to 170,000 spacos and 12 science. What's up now? We can do enter into space, which is break 70 kilometers of altitude. This one was essentially the same, suborbital trajectory. Uh, we could do both of those. Oh, let's take both of those. And let's look at the tech tree, because <clears throat> we can unlock stuff now. We can unlock one node. So if we go here, what does that get us? Geiger counter, which is a new science experiment. It's also a battery, which would be very helpful, and a solar panel, because you see we just ran out of electric charge. We're still limited to only 10 electric charge right now. This node gets us mostly aircraft stuff, which isn't that useful, but it does have this small reaction wheel that would give us attitude control. This node would give us basic liquid fuel engines and tanks, tiny decoupler, tiny fuel tank, uh, a longer solid fuel booster or a fatter solid fuel, fuel booster, and a radial decoupler. So I'm kind of torn here whether I want to grab the solid fuel booster or Geiger counter and solar panels. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this We're going to grab a couple of those solar panels, smack them right on our craft. Since we just unlocked a Geiger counter, we'll do that too. We just unlocked a barometer, we'll do that too. Okay, so let's launch this. But not actually. We're not actually going to launch that. We're going to sit right here on the launch pad and do some experiments landed in the shores biome. In a stock Kerbal Space Program unmodded, this is a special biome, the launch pad. So there's a bunch of special biomes right around here. Each building is basically its own special biome. And you can kind of cheese a lot of science just by going from building to building. That's not true in Kerbalism. In Kerbalism, this is all just part of the base biome, shores. So we're only going to get shores science from this. But we should be, yeah, we're not using electric charge now because the solar panel is keeping us charged. So we'll time warp until we finish this temp scan. And then we'll do the same thing for a telemetry report. And now let's do a pressure scan. Okay, and then the last one we're going to do is radiation scan. All right, let's recover. And now we're back up to 16 signs, so we can take another node, which means we can take this one too. Now we have both of them. Okay, let's uh, remind ourselves the contract we're trying to complete here. Just above 70 kilometers for both of them. That's, that's it. So it not have to be any more complicated than that. Oh, music has appeared too. I don't know what to think about the music settings in this game. I turn it off, and then it just, it just happens sometimes. It will not be denied. You can see this is essentially the same vehicle. We're just using the long booster now. I am going to take these solar panels off. Instead, swap it for batteries. Those things are draggy, is the problem. So now we've got 100 electric charge on board instead of 10. Um, are these dudes going to give me an imbalance in any way? Because I still have no attitude control on this craft. We're just going to fly wherever it flies. I can't steer it in any way. So I don't want to unbalance it. I do want it to go mostly up. Start our experiments. Launch. Starting to lean a little, but not a whole lot. 
I think it's okay. Already filled up a hard drive. We need epilapses to be above 70 to fulfill this contract. And it is above 70 now, but remember that once the engine Jesus, once the engine cuts off, we're going to be subjected to drag and it's going to pull us back down some. But I think we passed it by quite a good margin, so it's certainly not going to drag us back down to below 70. At this point we're just we're just on a ballistic trajectory, so let's time warp. Hopefully we get as much science transmitted as we can. Contract complete. World's first, contract complete. We are transmitting at 3.3 kilobytes per second. What's that about? Because wasn't this supposed to be 2.2? I don't understand. Traveling to the west, that's partly because we had that initial slight imbalance towards the west that turned us. It's also partly because the uh, planet is just rotating towards the east beneath us. The planet's so small. We're about to finish TM report transmission. About to be back in the atmosphere. Okay, you can see an issue here is that we've got all this data that we're just not going to be able to transmit before we hit the ground. So we'd really like to work towards uh, recoverability. We would like to recover this hard drive to land it instead of crash it so that we can go pick it up and get the data out of it. That's what we want to start building towards initially. I think all of these trees are added by the Parallax mod. So I have the Parallax 2.0 installed. I did configure, did the change in the config file to make them have colliders. So I know things like rocks have colliders. I don't know if these trees will have colliders. I also kind of think that some of these trees are stock and some of them aren't. I, one of these tree types I think might be stock and the other type isn't. I couldn't tell you which is which. I'm also quite surprised that survived. Back to Space Center. This, uh, this window here, FYI, is a Kerbalism thing. So this lets you visualize the radiation fields. This is the inner radiation belt. It's a torus. You can see this is the inner edge of it, and this is the outer edge of it. And the, being in between those means you get a higher dose of radiation. Same thing for the outer belt. It's a torus, where this is the inner surface, and this is the outer surface. And then there's the magnetosphere, which we'll have to zoom out to see. Um, the magnetosphere essentially protects you from solar radiation, so you'll get more radiation if you're outside of this bubble than in. That means if you want to visit the moon, the best time to visit would be while it's passing through this area right here. Unfortunately, there's no such advantage to getting to Minmus, because Minmus is just always outside of the magnetosphere. Anyway, we don't need that now. Let's turn on debris and uh, recover that chunk. At 320,000 spacos and 25 science. Let's call it an episode here, and next time we'll see what next missions are available for us. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.